This is disgusting. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam. I'm one half of the DeploymentZone.tv team, and this is a channel predominantly focused on covering 40k content. And tonight, tonight, I'm looking at some of the Death Guard rules that have been leaked on the community page. So if you're new here, this is part of a weekly commitment to try and kick out a video covering some kind of 40k topic. Um, luckily at the moment, Games Workshop are kicking out loads of new rules and loads of new articles, which make it really easy for me to do this. Um, but historically, I've been really bad at, at doing it weekly. Um, we're doing it now. We're back. This is like, you should notice, this is one week after the other. I, I said I would, and it's happening. Um, so if you want to support the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and give it a like and a comment so that everyone sees that this video is amazing and it trends and then before you know it, I'm bigger than the biggest YouTubers in the world and we can start dominating the market. You get the idea. Global domination is all anyone should ever be focused on, right? Uh, but tonight in this episode, we are covering some of the new Death Guard rules and I was going to wait because we do get preview copies of the codexes from Games Workshop and I was going to wait, get out in hand and have a look at it. Um, we were promised it at the end of last year and obviously COVID has put a stop to that. I think it's something to do with their supply issues with um, with their supplier for the codex printing. I think it happens over in the far, I think it's in China they print the codexes so they haven't had um, or they've had an issue with supply. So we haven't been given one yet and I was still going to wait and I was going to wait but because I now make, I have a window of time where I film every Monday night um, I needed content to film, and I was I originally was set up to talk about the app because I want to talk about the, the 40k app and, and show you why I think it's wrong and how I think it can be improved, but we can save that one because this is current, and I was skimming the rules today on my lunch break and thought, I need to talk about these. So, so to, to clarify, we don't have the codex yet. I'm expecting it to arrive any day because all this sort of ramped up releases that we get on the community page normally means that a codex will drop through my door shortly after. But we don't have it now, but I still think it's worth talking about. And we can talk about what we know so far. So at the end of last year, we got some previews. They showed us the new data sheet from Otari and some subtle changes to him. Um, if I'm clever enough and I can be bothered tonight, I will put his data sheet up on screen for now. You can have a quick look at it. Um, and noticeably, there were some new rules that were shown on him and some new abilities and the ability to take extra warlord traits and stuff because they've put the main plague hosts in the codex now. So you have basically chapters for Death Guard. Uh, rather than just having plain Death Guard, it looks like you have this... This new thing they're introducing where there's the seven plague hosts and you get a warlord trait, a relic, and something else. Maybe a psychic power, I can't remember. But you get three things, or a stratagem, sorry. A stratagem as well. Maybe you'll get a psychic power as well, actually. Who knows? Um, this is something they started, sort of started to do with the Psychic Awakening series. They did it with Custodes. Um, they did it with some other different codexes that hadn't previously had that kind of functionality. Um, they did do it with Harlequins, but I mean, I think that was in the white dwarf rather than the coat i can't remember i don't remember but they did start to do this at the end of eighth edition uh, with some of the psychic awakening books and it's good to see it for death guard we've seen it before with thousand sons with their different cults um so i think this is a really positive change because it allows death guard players some variation and people can pick their favorite play coast and go down that route instead um and Maltarian's rules as i said did also allude to there being new rules within the death guard codex and over the course of the last I don't know, week or so, I think it's been. They've shown us a lot of these new rules, and one of the reasons why I wanted to do this video about it and, and create a quick video to explain to you guys what I've seen so far is, I, I think it's insane. I, <laughs> we don't know the points yet, but I think it's crazy what they're doing at the moment, and Death Guard, dare I say it, they were resilient before, disgustingly so. I think they're more resilient than ever before. I think there's a crazy level of resilience we're about to see from the Death Guard. And it will be interesting to see actually how their points sit with this new codex, whether they've been pointed up to match this resilience, or whether they now think that naturally this is where their resilience should sit. One of the new abilities that we saw on Matarian's data sheet was the Contagions of Nurgle ability, um, which is something that's been leaked. And this is very, very interesting. I believe if your army's battleforged, almost everything in your army gets this. And the Contagions of... And everything has to have the Death Guard keyword, obviously. And the Contagions of Nurgle ability is an aura ability that 
causes your opponent to have minus one to their toughness. Now, in Battle Round 1, it starts off as a one-inch aura, which doesn't sound incredible, but there are armies out there, nids with things like gene stealers and stuff, that can make first-turn charges, and if they do make a first-turn charge, they will be affected by this aura, so in that regard it works, but it's not broken good, because it's, you don't want to be affecting someone with an aura the other side of the board in turn one. But what happens is, is the turns go on, the stench gets worse, and the aura gets stronger. So in turn two, it's three inches in turn three it's six inches and in turn four onwards it's nine inch aura and at turn four you're going to have been advancing anyway and people will be on objectives and fighting for primary objectives and stuff and the aura is now pretty big and that's a minus one toughness bubble to everything within nine ranges of any death guard unit that's in that battle forge detachment that's actually really powerful i think that's actually really really strong and i'm quite impressed by it um I like it. That's good. It's very Death Guard as well, right? Um, that's one of the rules that Mortarion had on his data sheet. There was also an article released today that shows us about Mortarion's Warlord traits, and it's also... I've just realised it says the Seven Plague Companies, not Six Plague Companies, not the Seven Plague Hosts. Six Plague Companies. Nurgle needs to make up its mind what its number is. Is it three, six, or seven? Because that's, that's greedy. Corn eight, it's inch nine. What is Nurgle? Is it three? Is it six? Is it seven? I, come on, make it make it easier for me. But today's article does show us that he has warlord traits. That's right, traits. Plural. He has more than one. I don't know if this is something that we're going to see with things like demon primarchs and primarchs in the future, but they list... I'll, I'll, I've got it here. They list... Uh, now he has revolting re resilient, living plague, and arch contaminator as warlord traits. Additionally, one of his additional special rules is he can take an additional warlord trait from one of the six plague companies. So essentially, he's going to have four warlord traits. I think you can pick which one of the six you want as well. So he has three warlord traits set for him and one you can pick. That is a raft of special rules. Arch contaminator... I assume will be similar to previous, which means you can reroll all fell to wounds. Uh, revolting reason, that's going to be an interesting one. And Living Plague, another interesting uh, warlord trait for him. Revolting resili Resilient is going to be interesting because Disgustingly Resilient has changed. And it was interesting, there was some kind of backlash to this when it happened, and actually I'm a big fan. I think potentially it's got worse on the whole. Narratively speaking, I think it's got worse. Narratively, I would definitely agree it's not as strong as it used to be because a two damage weapon hitting a single wound Death Guard character of some sort, whether that be a Poxwalker or a Plague Marine, as was, I mean they have two wounds now, but as was, with the old Disgustingly Resilient rule, where it was a five plus after you take damage, there was the chance that you could still survive that, which was very Death Guard. With the new Disgustingly Resilient rule, not so much. And if you haven't seen the new Disgustingly Resilient rule, they've changed it. So now instead of having an additional 5 plus save after you've taken damage, so you roll to hit, roll to wound, you roll your saving throw, whichever that might be, and if you fail, the number of damage you then suffer, you roll, would roll that number of d6, and on a 5 plus, you would ignore that point of damage. Potentially for a 6 damage weapon, you roll 6 5 pluses, and you don't take any damage at all. So actually a Plague Marine could quite simplistically not simplistically, that's definitely not the right word, simplistically, but potentially, potentially could shrug off a last cannon hit with a damage 6 weapon. Interesting now, Disgustingly Resilient is minus 1 damage. Now, again, narratively I think maybe worse because you don't have that potential to do what I've just said. If you now get hit with a 6 damage weapon, you take 5 damage and a Plague Marine dies. But I think in terms of game mechanic, I prefer it. So although it's less narrative, which this goes against my very soul and fibre of my being, saying that I prefer something that's perhaps less narrative, but it does make the gameplay easier, simpler, and quicker, and I'm for that, and just subtracting one from the damage, and there you go, there's Disgusting Resilient done, and we haven't got this whole extra phase of rolling that now exists, is definitely something that I'm on board with. But it also begs the question, what does Revoltingly Resilient mean now? Does Revoltingly Resilient now give that five up, feel no pain that they've lost otherwise, or does Revoltingly Resilient mean minus two to damage or minus three to damage or half all damage rounding up? Who knows? I don't know what that means. That'll be super interesting to see what that is. Talking about resilience, today's article also showed us that Poxwalkers have gone up to toughness four. They naturally hit in melee on a four plus now with two attacks each. Did they have two attacks each before? I don't remember. But you used to only hit on four pluses if your unit size was a certain size. That's gone. They now do that on standard, but they're also now, like I say, toughness four and have Disgustingly Resilient as well. Um, and I thought, well, that that's a buff all around, right? You've got a better whip and skill, so you're hitting uh, better in combat. You've got a higher toughness naturally, so you're naturally already more resilient than before. 
So more points. No, no, the article is claiming they've gone down in points. So I think Poxwalkers were a pretty hefty mainstay in many Death Guard armies in the past anyway. I don't think we ever had really many problems with Poxwalkers not being fielded and there being better choices. And, and now they've got better and, and you can take more of them for the same points. You're going to see more Poxwalkers than ever before, I think, is almost a guarantee. Um, not necessarily a, down, a, a, sort of a downside to it, because I think narratively with Death Guard as well, you have some big hulking ancient power armoured marines and then a sea of infected... Um, it just, yeah, I kind of I kind of like it. Just before Christmas, actually, I finished listening to the audiobook uh, Lords of Silence, and that was kind of their... Man, not their mantra, that was kind of their modus operandi was just a sea of walking pox swarming this bastion with the power armor guys crashing through the rules in certain places. So I'm not necessarily against it, but they were pretty tough and durable and resilient anyway. Now it looks like they've got even better and they're cheaper. Win-win for Death Guard players. In the same vein, we've also found out that now Chaos Lords and Chaos Sorcerers and such like that existed in the Death... The, what? I have to be honest and say that of all of the rules and leaks that, that they've given us so far from the Death Guard, and we won't get to cover them all tonight because I'm sure I'll forget some and people will remind me in the comments, remind me in the comments, um, but of all of the changes that are coming in the Death Guard Codex so far, this one is by far the one that I think satisfies me the most and makes me make that uh, noise because this is something that I had moaned about consistently all the way through 8th. If you were a Death Guard player or or you engaged in, in chat with me about Death Guard in 8th edition, you will realise that this was a massive, massive, massive thorn in my side and I hated it. I, dis I despised the way this worked. I hated the fact that if you had a Death Guard Chaos Lord or you had a Death Guard Chaos Sorcerer, it was plucked basically directly from the Chaos Space Marines book. There was not really any difference at all. It was the same profile. You had access to Death Guard stratagems and Death Guard relics and death guard psychic powers but otherwise it was the same model profile and that just didn't make sense to me and it meant people basically almost always took things like lords of contagion because you got disgustingly resilient because you got the higher toughness i hated it i really hated that because it's still a death guard chaos lord it's still been with the death guard all this time it's not like it's on attachment from the black legion and he's painted his armor green he's always been death guard he should have always had the same toughness he should have always had disgustingly re resilient and now they do they've buffed all of the chaos lords and sorcerers up to toughness five they now have disgustingly resilient as well much 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 better i think there's they've mentioned other rules as well that are that exist with the new chaos lords and sorcerers yeah, check, quickly checked. They've got the Contagions of Nurgle ability again. So they have that. So they have that aura. Perfect. This is much better. Thank you, Games Workshop. I, I knew you watched the channel. I knew you listened. I knew you listened. And this is much, much better. Other units that, for me, definitely needed some love were Death Shroud Terminators and um, Demon Engines. And Death Shroud definitely have been given some love. So their weapon skills increased to 2 plus now, which is a massive boon to them straight away. The Cataphraki armor no longer makes them half their advanced roll, which means they're significantly quicker, which is better. And their scythes now have two profiles, and one is minus 1 to hit, but is something like strength 8 in total, AP minus 2 or something, and flat 3 damage. But the other one is allows them to hit 2 or 3 times per attack at strength user ap minus one one damage so they have ability to take on that they're, they're a lot better i hope they haven't gone insane on their points but i feel like they are much much better as a choice now quickly checked the single strike profiles plus three strength and the reaping profile the swingy swingy prof so you've got the choppy 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 for plus three and the swingy for plus one i got that from brom so all in all, Death Shroud Terminators are now a much better choice. It's much more viable, specifically if their points, like I say, have stayed around the same. Um, and they, they were always four wounds anyway, and they're now going to get minus one damage. And I, I, I like them. I think they're definitely more viable than they used to used to be. And same with Demon Engines. I had an issue with Demon. I've always had an issue. This is another problem I've always had. You're going to listen to all my problems tonight, YouTube, whether you, whether you want to or not. Another problem I've always had with Demon Engines is they are... They have the spirit of a demon inside them. These demon creatures, when they are a demon prince or a demon primarch, or they have insane speed and insane strength and insane power, and power and insane awareness. And when infused in a war machine, suddenly became some clumsy, bumbling idiot. Comparatively, uh, when you when you looked at their marine equivalents, a 
a uh, a bloat drone or a plague burst crawler or a defiler or a mauler fiend or a forge fiend we're all hitting on fours and it's that really sucked as a chaos player if you wanted to take demon engines and therefore something that made your army significantly more chaos than its imperial equivalent you wanted to take demon engines to do that obviously because you can take predators and you can take um vindicators can't you chris uh, but they're just the same as the loyalist equivalent they weren't there was no real you put spikes on them but otherwise they were basically the same so i wanted to use demon engines in eternal slaughter specifically i rave about mauler fiends and i have decimators and i have hell drakes and all kinds and mauler fiends and stuff like that, hitting on fours was just a bit i just hated it a little bit but now they don't. Now they've improved their weapon skill, ballistic skill to 3+, plus, so they are basically where their marine equivalents have always been. It sounds bad when you say it that way, doesn't it? Um, and they've increased some of the weapons, so they've shown off the flesh mow of the bloat drone, how it gets 3 attacks per um, attack now, and it can do 12 attacks per bloat drone. And they've lost a wound, but they don't degrade anymore, so there's no harm in you racing it across the field. That's a benefit, that's a bonus. Now don't get me wrong, you did not not see demon engines in Death Guard armies anyway. You definitely saw Plague Burst Crawlers, many, many Plague Burst Crawlers. And you did see Bloat Drones, but you tended to always see the ranged firepower versions, specifically the Flamer, because it didn't suffer any penalty for moving and firing a heavy weapon, etc. Um, but now maybe you'll see the other vari variants more, because there's there's more viability to using the Flesh Mower and stuff like that, hitting on threes or twelve attacks with a Flesh Mower. It's pretty tanky, right? That's not... That's not too shabby. It's pretty decent for a drone to float and fly across quickly because they used to move 10 and you can advance and second turn maybe you'll be making charges with this flesh mower and then your opponent's got to deal with this bloke drone. And don't forget as well, if your bloke drone in turn two or three is getting in range three or six inches and it has this contagion ability and I don't know if it will, I think it will, suddenly then they're going to be minus one toughness. So you're going to want to get them in there. Maybe you can use them as floating balloons of minus toughness bubbles and you can fly your drones forward and you'll be near the enemy and they'll suffer minus toughness and you can bombard them from distance. Amazing. Imagine getting a space marine down to toughness three and smashing him with your inexorable advanced bolt guns. And that's another special rule they've updated is inexorable advance, which used to mean that bolt guns could rapid fire at 18 inches um, and so could plasma guns, I think, could rapid fire 18 inches, and that was about your bonus, I think. I think dreadnoughts and infantry could fire heavy weapons on the move as well. Well, they've changed in inexorable advance um, in line with the new 9th edition rules. Inexorable advance in 9th edition, I think, is maybe one of their stronger changes to their rules, possibly. I'm not sure, but it feels really strong with 9th edition, so when... Jumping all over objectives and moving quickly is key, and infantry with objective secure, I think, is key for objectives, and you've got two wound toughness five plague marines with minus one damage. This this could be a big deal. So inexorable advance now has a three point to it. So point one is infantry count as being stationary. Um, which is important when you combine that with malicious volleys. And malicious volleys is basically bolter discipline. So with bolter discipline, if you stay still, you can fire rapid fire at full range. Well, now all your Death Guard infantry count as staying still, even when they move. So you can move your Plague Marines and still fire rapid fire at 24 inches. Big deal. That's a lot of extra firepower coming out, even when you're on the move. So you can now move onto your objectives and react to enemies, as well as getting maximum firepower. So that's pretty cool. Additionally, if the vehicle if the unit has a vehicle keyword, then they don't have the penalty or suffer the penalty for firing heavy weapons in combat. So heavy weapons fired in combat normally is minus one. So if you if your plague burst crawler gets tagged, its entropy cannons will be hitting on minus one. Nope. Inexorable advance means that that's not an issue. Uh, and then finally, if it's got the infantry keyword, then you ignore all modifiers and penalties to moving and advancing and charging. So nothing slows you down, terrain. I, I wonder how that will interact with things like Custodes Tanglefoot Grenades. So Tanglefoot Grenades is a stratagem, and if you play the stratagem, you minus D6 inches to their charge. Uh, it does say it ignores um, modifiers to move characteristics, advance, and charge rolls. So maybe Tanglefoot Grenades now you can roll your d6 i ignore it because i'm death guard and i don't care and i'm just gonna continue to plot on towards you and your demise is coming yeah getting infected i shouldn't say that should i considering the current climate i probably shouldn't say that that's just not the greatest phrase to use currently i should mention whilst i'm here because i've just checked it for inexorable advance that you only get that benefit that you count as remaining stationary for infantry if you hit, didn't fall back or advance. If you advance, 
you lose that ability, but I mean, it's still pretty strong. And they've also been given a rule called Remorseless, and Remorseless is basically ignoring modifiers to combat attrition tests. And if you don't know what a combat attrition test is, if you fail a morale check, which is done at the end of the turn, um, and you lose a model to a morale check, if you fail a morale check, you lose one model, and if you do that, you then take a combat attrition test for every remaining model in the unit, and on a one, you um, lose an additional model. Essentially, he flees. And there are modifiers, so if you're less than half strength, it becomes a one or a two and he flees. And I wonder if that counts as a modifier. I wonder if Remorseless will then ignore that from being a one or a two and it'll just be one. Maybe it'll be just one if it's Remorseless. But also those abilities that are, I am absolutely sure we're going to see throughout the releases and codexes from 9th edition from armies like Harlequins who often have lots of leadership shenanigans, armies like Tyranids who cause a lot of fear, where combat attrition tests I think will be modified by psychic powers or by auras or what have you. Um, this is gone from death. They don't care. The Death Guard. They just don't care. So again, very narrative change. So we're at the point where we sum up because I've covered most of the stuff that I think is quite exciting about the new Death Guard book from the rules that we've been given. Um, I'm hoping to flash some of them up for you where I would have scream and grab from the Warhammer community page so all credit goes to the Warhammer community team for those images. Um, wh what do I think about what we've heard for Death Guard so far in 9th edition? Well, I'm, Winters obviously has the end of all things and at the moment they scare the crap out of me. Um, they sound like they're going to be incredibly resilient and with some of the changes of the rules, their points remain the same-ish as they are currently. Um, I think that's quite a force to be reckoned with. I think it's going to be really hard to shift them. I'm hoping. So what I hope to happen is I hope we see more character, more individual character to Death Guard armies. And what do I mean by that? So traditionally Death Guard armies have consisted of basically all the same units. There are thereabouts. I think people will probably agree with me that you tend to see bloat drones with plague spewers. You tend to see some plague marines, some blight lord terminators... Um, who have also got the Cataphraki buff, also, by the way, and the Contagion ability. But you saw some Blight Lord Terminators, you see Pox Walkers, you'd see Typhus, maybe a Lord of Contagion, or a um, Malignant Plague Caster. You'd see two to three um, of the um, Plague Burst Crawlers. And that was most of it. You didn't tend to see many Blight Haulers. You didn't tend to see many Nurgle... De really, really didn't... I don't think I've ever really seen a, uh, like a Death Guard Hellbrew or something like that. So... Yeah, restricted by these are the best units in the book that have, that make the most from all the abilities. And I think that's one of the key things, right? When you've got a Chaos Lord who can't benefit from key army abilities like Disgustingly Resilient, and when you've got Blight Haulers who, who are four pluses to hit for this little... It doesn't, there's no real inclination to take those units. They just don't seem to be able to... They don't kick out as much punishment as other units or take as much punishment as other units, and therefore they don't fit that. And you want to optimise and make sure you're getting the most for your points. You, you want to get the most value for your points. And if you're not going to get value for points out of a model, to some extent, why would you take it? Now, for me personally, things like Chaos Lords and Sorcerers, I wouldn't take them because I don't understand how I can honestly suggest they fit a narrative of a Death Guard army when they're... We played Champion of Chaos on DeploymentZone.tv. It's a series that was released in 8th edition. I urge you to sign up and watch it because it's still absolutely incredible. But um, Sabat, who was War uh, Winters' Chaos Lord, because we both took a Chaos Lord, it never sat right with me that he was Toughness 4 and he didn't have Disgustingly Resilient. He should have been Toughness 5 with Disgustingly Resilient right from the start. And who knows? Who knows? Maybe if he'd have had those abilities, the Champion of Chaos could have gone differently at certain times in that series because there were some epic things that happened with Sabat during that series, and I won't spoil it for people that haven't seen it yet, but perhaps that could have made a big difference. But it just didn't sit right that the Lord of a Death Guard army didn't have those real core mechanics for Death Guard. I cannot wait to see people's Chaos Lord... Death Guard, Chaos Lord conversions and stuff like that now. I think it could be phenomenal what people could come up with and you won't necessarily just see every army with one of those Dark Imperium, Lord of Contagions, maybe Typhus and a Malignant Playcaster. I'm so excited about what this means for people's individuality. On top of which you've got the Plague Hosts now, the Six Plague Companies. And I think the Six Plague Company is giving them additional rules. Again, there's an article that was released on the 7th of January on the community page that that gives you some of those extra rules for those plague companies. I'm not going to bore you with all the details now. This has already gone on for probably longer than I wanted it to because I say I'll do a 10-minute video. 10 minutes a week ends up being half an hour. But those six plague company rules, again, 
not I'd like to think not every single player is going to pick the same play company. Maybe competitively they will. Maybe competitively there is a stronger choice and there is still a Death Guard meta list. But let's face it, most of the world doesn't play competitively. And because most of the world doesn't play competitively, I'm excited to see the variety that might come onto the tabletop now with Death Guard. Super excited about that. Not so excited about facing Winters' Death Guard because I know he's got... Death Shroud, Blight Lords, Poxwalkers galore. I know he's got all the things. He's got all the things, and I don't... It's the end of all things. He's got all the things. I'm not excited about that. But I do think this is going to be a strong codex, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on it. And I'll probably be saving my, de my codex reviews for DeploymentZone.tv. I don't know yet. Maybe. We'll see. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But I'm, ex I'm excited about getting my hands on on that codex and having a look at how this army is going to work in 9th edition. So I hope that was helpful for some of you that can't be bothered to read the community articles because that was me ages ago. I couldn't be bothered and now I have to take myself away from my desk for a lunch break and that's when I have a read and think, oh, I'd like to talk about that actually. I'm quite excited about these rules. So um, I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have found it helpful, if you have enjoyed the video and you do like what you see, then make sure you hit the subscribe button like I said at the start. And if you like and comment, it does help. If you don't like it, hit a dislike, put a thumbs down. That's fine. At least I know that you guys detest this content and you just keep coming back and watching it anyway. Um, if you want to support the channel further, there are a number of ways you can do that. First of all, you can head on over to www.deploymentzone.tv. That is a website that is owned by both myself and Winters from Winters SEO. Um, and it's an on-demand channel of 40k content. Winters puts battle reports on there every single week. There's been a battle report on there every single week pretty much since the 1st of June 2018. So there's a ton of content on there. A lot of it is obviously not 8th edition stuff until 9th edition hit. But we're 30 or 40 battle reports into 9th edition now as well on the website. Um, I've committed to doing a more frequent, possibly weekly show. Similar to this one, not the same. Uh, I won't be covering the same content, for example. It's not like I put a different t-shirt on and move my hair and go... New video, it's different content. Um, so you can check out those. We have behind the scenes. There's more community content being generated. There's a brand new podcast chat thing that's gone live. It's hosted by a guy called Alex, which is he's got a channel called Quipster Nerd. If you haven't seen his check or check, uh, channel, check it out. So there's loads and loads of content on there. And there's more exciting stuff coming in 2021, which I can't tell you about now, but it's coming. Another way to support the channel is to head on below and use the Element link. The first link you see will take you to the Death Guard page on the Element Games website. So if you are interested in looking at some Death Guard products, click that link, follow it through to the Death Guard page, um, and that will tell Element that you came from our channel. And when I say our, me, Winters, and TV use all the same links. Um, and then the channel gets a slight kickback if you make any purchases using that link. So thank you very much for everybody who's been using that link so far. I encourage you to keep using the link and save it, bookmark it, keep hold of it. Um, lower on in the page, there'll be another link to Element, which is just their like main page. So you don't have to save and bookmark the Death Guard page if you don't want to. You can bookmark the main page. And then every time you use that bookmark, they know you came from us. And we get a kickback and it's super supportive. So thank you very much. And that's the two main ways you can support the channel. Um, I am affiliated with another company called The Beard Struggle when they do um, beard products. You, it's glorious, right? It's lovely. And you, there's an affiliate link down there. That all gets donated to charity. Um, so that's another way you can support something. Not the channel necessarily, but support something. And they know that we make loads of sales for them, so they support me as well. It's amazing. And I think that's about it. I think that's everything. Um, there's Instagram links below and all that because Alex will tell me off if I don't tell you. And that's... That's what I want to talk about. That's tonight's video. I hope you're enjoying this new weekly series. And I say weekly knowing that I've only done two in a week. And then hopefully next week you'll go, oh, maybe he's going to stick to this. This, this actually might be a thing. And then the week after you go, geez, a month's worth? Oh, wow. And then you'll all start subscribing, right? Good. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.